Hey guys, even here, and in this video we're gonna check out how did Logan Franklin do in his in his classic physique debut at his Tampa Pro 2019, and we're also gonna check out how did guys Sternino do in 212. So as you can see, Logan Franklin is looking good. And before I start talking about him, I wanna say great job muscular development, great job with the video. This is literally the first time that I'm watching such a high quality footage of a bodybuilding show. And this is extremely important for the sport because not everybody can go and watch every single show in the world. And bodybuilding cannot be on a radio or on a horrible quality video footage. It needs to be on a high quality video because you need to watch, you need to see the details, the small details you can basically only see live. But if it is a very good quality footage like here, you can see a lot of it. And as you can see, Logan Franklin, let's talk about him now, looked great. Honestly, I was impressed. I didn't expect him to look this good. He took third spot at this Tampa Pro, but he was 208 pounds, and that's like 20 pounds more that he can actually grow. And he was well conditioned, he was in great conditioning, but I think he was sharper maybe like two days before the show. I think he messed it up a little, but still, he was very well conditioned. I'm gonna show you how he looked compared to the other guys who took first and second spot, but only after he's finished with his posing routine. Anyways, my overall impression is good. I mean, I really liked his physique, I really liked what he brought. He brought great conditioning and very good lines. He has very, very aesthetic physique. I was worried about his legs because he's a man's physique competitor, so they're not known for having great legs, but he had great legs. The only thing I don't like about his legs is uh, as they go down at the area of his knees, they look a little bit smaller in that part. And the upper part of his legs is looking a little bit more massive, but that's just his structure. He cannot change that ever, but his legs are not small, he can grow them and he grew them, they're pretty big, especially for somebody who transitioned from man's physique. They are big and, and very defined also, a lot of details in them. As I already said, he was only 208 pounds, which is not a lot, and he has 20 more pounds to grow. I think he was perfectly defined, I don't think he can get any more conditioned than this, I mean this is just the way that the top pros at the Mr. Olympia are. I mean, this is your top-notch conditioning. He's very well conditioned. He was maybe a tiny little bit watery. He can get a little bit drier, so he can lose like another pound, maybe a two. Maybe, maybe, I'm just speculating here, I don't know really. But you can see his back looked great, very dry all over, but his glutes and hamstrings could have been just a tiny bit drier. And I think that's just you know, the carving up process, I think he overcarved a little bit, because I watched his uh, progress photos that he was uploading on Instagram and he looked a little bit dry, maybe like two or three days before the show, and he got a little bit, you know, a little bit uh, watery for the show, but still, still amazing condition, amazing conditioning, I mean, I'm just saying he could be a little bit crispier, even with this kind of body fat percent, if he came just a little bit drier, with less water retention. So, as you can see, he probably didn't win because he wasn't as big as, the, as most of these guys. I mean, these guys are like bodybuilders. I don't know how they even make up, make the weight, but look at this guy on the right. I think he's Russian or Ukrainian. They call him like Russian Chris Bumstead. He looks, he definitely looks like Chris Bumstead and his back is enormous. Look at his back. Much better back than Bumstead, but the legs are not there. The legs are not there. But yeah, crazy back, crazy V taper. I really liked his physique for sure, especially from the back. But Logan, Logan's back was also really good. You know, again, for a man's physique competitor, he had very well developed legs and back and back. So if he adds those 20 pounds in the next couple of years, he can be he can be top six contender at the Mr. Olympia. I'm sure. I have no doubts because he has really that classic physique really those classical lines, you know. Unfortunately, classic physique is not what we all thought it would be. If it was all about golden era classic physiques, then Wesley Vissers would be the champion. He wouldn't be 14th place in the Arnold Classic or 10th place, whatever it was. So it's not all about that. It's just a weight cap and longer trunks. And also they're looking for that finer details, you know. But as far as those classical lines, you know, dominant arms, small waist, vacuum, very good shape, you know, aesthetically pleasing shape, that's not classic physique. We saw that with George Peterson winning Garnot Classic against Steve Lorius, and we can see it today at the Tampa Pro. Don't be too surprised if I tell you this guy won it. This guy won the classic physique. Look at the stomach. Look at the bubble gut. Yep, bubble gut. Logan Franklin had an amazing vacuum and crazy classical physique, you know, very beautiful aesthetical physique, but this guy with his blown up stomach was a better bodybuilder. And as I already said, 
Classic physique is not about being classic. That's just how they call it. It's just a weight cap and longer trunks. So this guy was definitely the best bodybuilder on the stage. He was definitely the biggest guy here. The muscle maturity was on point. The conditioning, the, the, the thickness, the density, everything was there, you know, from that st bodybuilding standpoint. And he probably had more straighted glutes and overall conditioning, sure. But was he more classic per se? Hell no, he wasn't. He even had a bubble gut. But, you know, these guys, these bodybuilders who cannot really get big enough to be competitive in the open, they either go down to 212 if they're short enough, but if they're not, now they go to classic. They downsize a little if it is possible for them, and they compete in classic simply because they can fit the weight cap. And the guy that won, his name is Abner Logan, and this guy right here who took the second place is Ricky Moten. So, basically, these guys, I mean, the top two, really muscular, really good bodybuilders, but not super classic. I mean, yeah, the second guy, this guy right here, Ricky Moten, yeah, he is pretty classic. Not super classic, not uh, as classic as some of them, but yeah, more classic than the guy who won. But you know, I'm more impressed by his freakiness, I mean, look at his side chest, than I am with his classic alliance. And uh, yeah, he also has a bit of a trouble controlling the stomach, and that should never be seen in classic physique. I mean, come on, what are we talking about here? Okay, sure, yeah, what is classic? You can ask me that, what the hell is classic? But you know what is classic, you know, that's like golden era type of physiques. Frank Zane, Serge Nubre, Arnold, and guys like that, and we're trying to repeat that, because that's what we were missing, you know, in today's bodybuilding. But they created the classic physique, and it's not really what we were asking for. And I understand, that would be too subjective, the judges wouldn't be able to really judge the show based on who is more classic, who looks more aesthetic. Then the competition would actually turn to a real beauty pageant, and it wouldn't really be a bodybuilding competition. But it is what it is, I mean, I don't really like the fact that these guys that are bodybuilders are winning these shows and placing higher than real classic guys. But, you know, on the other hand, when you have classic alliance, you know, small waist, ability to pull vacuum, or just, you know, small waist is enough, and great arms, good V-taper, not exactly an X-taper, like you can see here, huge legs, but more of a V-taper with good enough legs. And when those guys have a lot of muscle, muscle maturity, density, thickness, and great conditioning, and great posing as well, great presentation overall, when everything clicks, that's when you get a Mr. Olympia champion. And that's, for example, Brion Ainsley, that's Chris Bumstead. And when you have guys like Logan Franklin, who has very good classic alliance, but isn't big enough, or when you have Wesley Wissers, who has an incredible classic physique, but isn't shredded enough, then they don't place that well. But let's give these guys, the guys with the best lines, a little bit more time. This is a very young division, you know. We're gonna need a little bit more time, a couple of years, for guys like Logan Franklin here, and for example Wesley Wissers, to get a little bit better bodybuilders, you know, to get a little bit bigger, a little bit more shredded, and gain that muscle maturity and density, and with those lines, I'm sure they're gonna be dominating the stage. Same thing goes with Keon Pearson, and Steve Laureus, who actually made great improvements this year, and I'm sure Logan Franklin and Wesley are gonna flourish when the time is right. We're just gonna have to wait a couple of more years, probably. Wow, I really liked Logan Franklin's front double bicep. It really reminds me of Chris Bumstead with better arms, but a little bit less muscle. And in a couple of years, I'm sure this guy will be top six in the Mr. Olympia, at least. Me, personally, I really like this guy. His name is Dmitry Vorotintsev, if I didn't butcher his name. And look at that V taper. Oh, look at this V taper. Look at the small waist and the lats. The only thing that he's lacking is legs. His legs are definitely small. He's Russian, by the way, from St. Petersburg. Um, he looks great. He looks really classic. That's what I like about this division, seeing these guys like this. And uh, his Instagram account is super impressive, so check him out, guys. The photos that he has are really a things of beauty. And uh, at these competitions, he is not judged fairly because he is not judged by his aesthetics and classic alliance. He is judged by muscularity, conditioning, density, thickness. But look at the back. Very beautiful back. Very beautiful lines. If this guy brings his legs up, and I don't see why he wouldn't do that, he does have the muscle bellies, I don't see why his legs are not bigger, he just needs to work longer, probably, to bring them up, maybe he has bad knees or something, but the genetics are there, the shape is there, he just needs to grow them somehow, but look at the upper body, 
damn. If I was him, I wouldn't even train my upper body. I would just kill the legs and, you know, probably use a lot of insulin and carbs just to make them huge. You know, hire Milo Sharter, for example, do the giant sets with a bunch of insulin and a bunch of carbs and amino acids and who knows what the hell he's doing. So I would just, you know, let the legs catch up with his upper body, which is tremendous. But enough talk about classic. Let's go to, are these 212 guys bigger guys or smaller guys? I mean, they are shorter, but pound for pound, they are bigger. Well, I guess we can call them bigger. Anyways, uh, Kai Sisternino. If you never watched him pose in person, live, this is the best video quality that you will probably ever see. I mean, that you have ever seen so far. Maybe we're gonna get even better quality in the future. I really hope so. But Guy, um, considering the fact that he was uh, off the stage for quite some time due to his injury, I think it was some kind of surgery. Not really sure what was it. If you guys know, remind me. After he came back, I think he looks more impressive. I think I like his physique even more. His back was always his issue. His quads are what he's known for. His nickname is Quadro, but he said that's not because of his quads. I don't know about that. Anyways, his quads are not looking very symmetrical. You can see that when he turns uh, in front later, you can see that uh, his quads are not very symmetrical. One is bigger, one is smaller. But his back, now you can see his back, that's why he didn't place better than he did. I mean, he took third spot because his back is not great. And I'm going to show you the rest of the lineup. You will see who took first spot. And the guy who took first spot had an amazing back, really good back. And not only back, but the whole back side. I mean, his hamstrings also, maybe even glutes. He was shredded. He was peeled, very well conditioned, probably better than ever. Maybe not better than ever, but consider the fact that he came back from an injury or whatever surgery that was, he looks really good. I mean, I find his physique kind of fresh now. Maybe because he took a break and his body responded quite well. Um, let me show you how he looked compared to the other guys. The winner of 212 was John Javitt. And you can see him right there between a guy Sternino, he's on the left. And on the right, we have Zane Watson who took second place. And in the middle is the guy who won it. And you can see that his back was the best in this lineup, probably, and much better than Guy's. Uh, guy needed this win. Guy really needed this win because that was the last competition, I believe, to qualify for the Mr. Olympia. I don't think there are any more Olympia qualifiers left. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure this is the last one. And he didn't win it, but he got a lot of points from competing at the other competitions. He didn't qualify by winning, but maybe it will be enough because 212 is not exactly flourishing this year as a division. I mean, at the Arnold, we don't even have 212 because we didn't have enough competitors showing up. So... Maybe the lineup is not going to be super deep at the Mr. Olympia, and for that reason, Guy may even show up, so I'm not really sure about that. Anyways, guys, I just wanted to say good job muscular development with this high-quality footage. I really love it. I can really give a proper reaction, a proper coverage, because I can see really what is happening. I mean, watching bodybuilding in horrible footage is really... It's not even as bad as watching football on the radio. I think that's, that makes more sense. <laughs> Literally, because bodybuilding is all about the small, small little details that you can barely even see on this kind of camera. If you guys are going to the competitions and you're watching them live in person, you know what I mean. Because very often you can see pictures and videos and some people will say, this guy was robbed, but if you were there, you saw what you saw and you know why happened, what happened. Because it's much different when you're watching stuff in person because you can really see what the judges are seeing from that first row. It's much different, and so... And I can't wait to watch the Open Division to see Dexter and Luke at this high-quality footage, so I'm very excited about this. Aren't you? Anyways, guys, tell me what you think about this Classic Division. Do you think Logan deserved third spot? Should have he won it or placed slower? What do you think about Guy and Zane Watson? Anyways, tell me what you think about this whole situation. Tell me, are you excited about this high-quality footage? We're gonna see top guys in this kind of video. I'm really looking forward to that. Once again, guys, thank you very much for watching the video. Like it if you enjoyed it. And please subscribe so you don't miss out on the future updates. I'm going to upload another video as soon as I see the footage from the Open Division. So, guys, thank you very much once again, a million times, and all the best. Bye-bye.